All right, so new development. I managed to break the screen on my Zumo XT. Class six road, not maintain my town. Definitely seems not as crazy as class four. Except for this part, holy sh- Oh no. Oh, apparently I lost some set screws for that. All right, so day two of dirt days and I'm doing one of these self-guided routes uh, on my own. This is one of the uh, easy routes because I'm still a little tired from yesterday. Yesterday was an intermediate route that I did and uh, I definitely learned something about myself as a rider. Uh, I definitely feel like at this point I fall into a somewhat kind of middle of the road, slightly above beginner and slightly below intermediate. But uh, you know, you just gotta, gotta keep practicing, get those skills. And some of the stuff we did yesterday was absolutely fantastic for me to practice and get some of those skills, especially in an environment where we had, uh, you know, a whole group of riders that were all there to help if anyone dropped the bike. I dropped my bike a few times. A lot of other people dropped their bikes a few times. It was definitely a, a challenge, but it was fun. Unfortunately, the best bike drops my GoPro died for, and I didn't have a battery plugged into it. So I did not get footage of those, and I'm so upset because I would have loved to have watched those back again and shared those with all of you. But anyway, let's get into this ride. The one nice thing about today compared to yesterday is uh, everything's a lot more dry. Yesterday it was just wet everywhere because it was raining in the morning and lots of slippery and slimy roads, like roads like this in some cases were just mud slicks. It was so bad, but today seems a lot nicer, which means this will be a lot more fun. Not that yesterday wasn't fun, but it'll be a lot more fun to do alone. So yesterday's ride was actually through Vermont, which was literally like, we're right on the Vermont border with where our base camp is for this event. So today I'm doing uh, a couple of the New Hampshire routes and I think tomorrow I'm gonna finish up with a, a Vermont route uh, just so I can see more of the beautiful scenery in Vermont. And I don't have a stop sign. I don't know why I'm slowing down, but you know, always check intersections is a smart thing to do. But it was, uh, it was a super fun route yesterday and today definitely, I've got uh, two that I'm trying to get down. They're both about 75 miles, so I should be able to get them done today, no problem. Um, but it's, um, you know, it's, it's super duper nice out here. It's beautiful, you got the nice rolling hills. That's the one thing I miss about New England more than anything, is just the rolling hills everywhere. They're so, so beautiful. Uh... All right. They're flagging me through. So one interesting thing about a lot of these events, and also just like I've heard this talking to people who attend these events in general and seen it, there's not a lot of younger people attending these and like doing adventure riding stuff. Like everyone is, uh, you know, it's, it's honestly, it's mostly older men. Um, there is a, a really big push, it seems, at a lot of these two to be very, very inclusive to, have like women's only stuff and to get a lot of women riders in which is absolutely awesome uh it's it's so cool to to see that there's so many like women riders here because they did like two days worth of just dedicated stuff for women riders i love it i absolutely love it yeah a lot of these events in general just tend to be like older men and it's i mean you know nothing wrong with it but it's like i definitely I would love to see more of my generation get into this and start doing this. It is, it's fun. But I, I would love to, love to, love to, love to see more guys in their like mid 20s, early 30s out here doing stuff. You know, even younger too, honestly. I wish I got into this at a younger age because I could have, I could have had so much fun. But that's all right, I'm into it now and I'm having so much fun. And that's the biggest thing that matters to me is just having a good time and enjoying myself. It's worth every minute. I mean, look at that, that, that view. That view right there says it all. It's so cool to see stuff like that. It's so cool to find little like off the beaten path things 
you know, uh, last night BDR did a presentation and they were talking about how one of their goals for BDR routes is to revitalize like ghost towns, towns especially that got hurt really bad in the pandemic because, you know, they thrive on having tourism and there was no tourism. It's so cool to see organizations that are A, producing something really fun for us riders and B, producing something that helps to kickstart small town economies and make them grow and thrive where they've been struggling for potentially years and years. Oh, wow. Look at that view. Holy crap. That is stellar. I should stop on the way back and take a friggin' picture. All right, so new development. I managed to break the screen on my Zumo XT. Didn't crack or anything like that. I dropped it by accident. Shit happens. And the screen got a couple green lines and that's about it. Um, doesn't look like anything's cracked, but it's definitely, um, it's definitely done for. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to crack it open and see maybe if a cable or something came loose, uh, because I dropped it. I've got the tools for it back in the trailer, but once I get back, I'll just take a look at that. One nice thing is Rever is here doing the roots for this, so you get the roots through Rever, and because of that, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna move my bike over here because I'm gonna drop it if I try to get it on, on that hill there. But yeah, so all the roots are on Rever, and I've got them on my phone. Well, that really sucks about the, the Zumo. I hope I can fix it, or I hope I can warranty it, because that would be kind of, Kind of shitty, huh, if I couldn't. I've had the thing, I I think I've had it for more than a year, so it may not be covered under a warranty, but like, it's it's recognized. It's supposed to be able to handle, you know, a fucking three foot drop. I've, granted, I've literally dropped it off the bike before while riding twice and had no problem, so I don't know. I'm hoping it's just a cable or something that came loose. It's very possible that it is. And I want to make a U-turn and pull off right there, which I'm going to do right here up at this road. Um, Cause I really, really, really want a picture there. And my phone decided to shut down, lovely. It just crashed. Probably. There we go. Let's see why you powered off. Probably because you're too fucking hot. Lovely. This is gonna be a really fun, fun ride back with the Zumo fucked up. Yeah, it powered off because it got too hot. All right, well, let's snag a picture while well, there's no one coming. Also curious, I may jank ass zip tie that. Actually, I've got some zip ties. All right, got the phone zip tied to the Zumo mount, all janky like. Um, I don't think it's going anywhere, hopefully. We'll see, should be on there. Decent enough, zip my tank bag back up and we'll give this another go. And then hopefully up here it'll stay cooler because it's got airflow. The versus being in here where it doesn't have airflow. Well, that's a fun way for day two, breaking my GPS and being stuck to use my phone. I wonder if I can get a mount here somewhere. My RAM mount is at home because I didn't expect to need it because I have a GPS with a mount on my bike, but apparently that don't work no more. So hopefully I can fix it. Uh, if not, I'm gonna give Garmin a call and see if I can send it out to them to get fixed. And if not, then I'm going to, uh, I guess I was looking at buying uh, one of the Garmin Montanas. So maybe I'll get one of the Garmin Montanas. Big shout out to River though. Super glad you guys are here. Super glad the roots are in River because I, uh, I wouldn't be able to finish this ride back if it wasn't for that. So thank you guys very much. I'm definitely looking forward to be able to ride the rest of this route. Oh, that is pretty. Look at that waterfall. Oh my God. There's one thing I love about adventure riding is cool shit like that. <laughs> oh, look at that.
Oh boy, nice little twisty around a lake. Oh, that house is for rent. I'd rent that shit in a heartbeat. In Connecticut, I used to live on like a lake community. So, I know, I had views like this all the time and I totally missed that. It's super duper nice. Everyone's usually ridiculously friendly. And it's just like, uh, it's so pretty. And back to dirt, yay! And right into the rut. Are there always ruts on the side of the road that you ride on and not the side of the road you don't ride on? Ever noticed that? I've noticed that a lot. It's a little annoying. I think I kind of want to get some bigger pegs for the bike too. I mean, the stock ones aren't bad, but like, well, it's also a lot nicer. I got the CD Adventure 2 boots and they're A, really comfortable, B, a lot, um, a lot more sturdy than the Forma Adventures. And also they just like, the steel shank that goes through the, uh, the boot makes it a lot sturdier as a platform to stand on pegs with. It's a lot more comfortable to do it. But I also kind of want some larger pegs, I think, just because they're, they, you know, the DRZ ones are a little small. And having more surface area definitely makes things a bit more comfortable. Just got to decide what I want to get. Class 6 road, not maintain my town. Was it class 6? I don't know. I'm about to find out. I don't know what a class four is. Oh! A little bit of a mud puddle there. Definitely seems not as crazy as class four. Except for this part, holy sh! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that was intense. Wowza. <laughs> wow, this nice, like, cruising easy ride turned into something a little more interesting. That's, oh, that's pretty. <laughs> All right, that was a little fun. I'm cool with that. I'm trying to stay out of the rut here. Man, they had me thinking this route was just, like, nice and leisurely and, like, dirt roads, but no. Here we are in this Class 6, whatever the fuck a Class 6 is. I gotta look it up. Fun road, though. Holy sh**. And <laughs> someone's got a cab in there. That's awesome. It's nice, though. This is cool. I like this. I was not expecting any of this on this route, and I'm super glad that I got it. Well, that was a fun little class six route. Holy sh**. I liked that one and I came out of this beautiful mountain views. Absolutely stunning. Oh, this event is great. This route is great. I am so happy and I hope my GoPro is still recording. Yes, it is. Woohoo! Success. Sharp turns, quarter mile ahead. Oh boy! And the road narrows. Actually looks kind of fun on the map here. Let's see what it's like. One lane road, caution ahead. Road narrows, 15 miles an hour. Twisties, 20 miles an hour. Make up your fucking mind. Oh, that's pretty. Ooh, that's really pretty. Ooh. Let's see if I get stuck at this thing. I don't know how these actually detect anything. Or if it's just timed. It gave me a green, that's all that matters. That is pretty. Wow. Time for some gas. Oh no. Oh, apparently I lost some set screws for that. See, this is what I mean. Everything vibrates loose. Well, I'm gonna have to see. Don't know if I have anything short enough of it in that, but that is a super nice piece that I have and I like it a lot. So, pop it in the tank bag for now. Maybe I should zip this up before I toss it over the side of the bike. Hmm. 
Only about a half a tank of gas. Not bad. No receipt. I'm really surprised the credit card company hasn't called and been like, why are there like a bunch of five to ten dollar charges for gas? Sometimes multiple times a day. Well, sir, I ride a motorcycle with a small tank. <laughs> so it uh, unfortunately I need to fill it up. <laughs> A little frequently. Well, glad I didn't lose that thing, because that would have sucked to lose. Sad I lost the screws, though. Let's go ahead and reset my mileage. And we're almost at base camp. So...